Hello, this is Chris with Cricut Users, and today we're looking at the HTC uh, Evo uh, 4G LTE from Sprint. Uh, this is a great phone to flash to Cricut. Um, on the left here is the AT&T HTC One uh, X. It doesn't have a dedicated camera button um, like the Evo 4G LTE, and the Droid Razor Max, great battery life. But uh, the screen, in my opinion, in comparison to the Evo LTE, I'd rather have that. So, we're going to talk about flashing this device over. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Mexiking713 for giving me a heads up on how to prepare uh, for this device. Uh, he probably saved me a whole lot of time in flashing it. So pretty much uh, we use the same drivers that we do for most of the uh, HTC uh, devices. If you're watching this just from YouTube, I gotta ask you, please go to the forum. Uh, this will make a lot more sense if you're participating in the forum. You'll see our uh, written tutorial there. Please don't just try to use the video uh, to go through this if you're a novice. Um, one thing you'll want to do is download the HTC uh, Diag drivers. Um, like I said, make much more sense if you follow along to our uh, thread there. I just want to provide the video to uh, help guide you uh, through this even more. Um, you're going to plug in your phone via USB and dial pound pound 3424 pound. This is the same code used in many uh, HTC devices. It enters a mode called DM command service and this will help you get it into diag mode when you're connected to your computer. box should come up uh, prompting you uh, for drivers, uh, if you go on our site and get the drivers, uh, you'll have no problems. You'll probably see something with an exclamation mark that says HTC Diag. Install the appropriate 32 or 64-bit uh, uh, drivers, and then you'll probably get something like this, HTC USB modem. You might have it under uh, ports. Um, it might be an HTC uh, COM port. Basically, you're going to want to make uh, check this port number out so you have it. So pretty much uh, right click the device and hit properties. Uh, wherever it is, on this one it's in advanced and advanced port settings. It might be somewhere else on another one. Um, I'm going to go back down to uh, COM3, try to set everything on uh, lower ports. Uh, if you do change the port, you might have to unplug and replug in the device. So since it is a Sprint device, we did have to uh, find the SPC, and like with the newer HTC devices, we had to use a program called RevSkills. Uh, someone posted up how to do use this on the forum, which was uh, really helpful. Uh, basically, you go open up RevSkills. We'll have the download link on the forum. Go to Hardware Forensics, Port Utils, and this uh, QC plus AT hyphen command right here. Uh, you're gonna set your port in this window, which for us it's COM port 3, and then we're going to go to the code tab, and we're going to hit HTC unlock SPC, it'll say done sending super SPC, uh, you can hit read SPC at that point, or you can have all zeros up here and just do uh, change SPC. Uh, at this point you're sending the SPC uh, to the device as well, which um, pretty much before we connect it to CMA tool by DFS will have to have sent that SPC. So what that did was um, figure out the SPC and we changed it to all zeros again using uh, Rev Skill. If you have a CDMA uh, tool or a CDMA workshop, you can uh, then send that SPC to the phone to unlock it. Um, someone will probably chime in on this but I did not see a location in DFS CDMA tool where you could just uh, send the SPC. So when you have DFS up, you're going to want to hit ports. And right here we have our HTC USB modem 4. We're going to double click that. I like to keep the log open so I can see what's going on. Um, this will pop up. We'll go ahead and double click that. And I'll say open right there in the log pretty much I don't see uh, any way here to unlock the device by sending the SPC you have read and write there 
but I don't see anything where you can send it. So again, once you have SBC set to zero, you can use Rev Skill and send it, or you can use uh, CDMA Workshop uh, 2.7 or 3.5 up or whatever version, and uh, do it. But basically, you have to send that before you're going to be able to read it with a DFS CDMA tool. So we're in the Programming tab and then uh, NAM tab right here. We're going to hit Read. Now. These are all the new settings. Uh, pretty much your MIN goes right there. That's the 10-digit uh, number that looks like your phone number. It might be the same number as your phone number, but then again, there's a good possibility it won't be. You can enter your MIN right there, area code, and then the last seven digits, and then area code, last seven digits. These two, uh, min A, min D, they're both the same. And then you're going to come down here and enter the MDN, which is your actual phone number. And PCS, you're going to enter your phone number again. SID, if you have the SID to your area, we have a thread for those. Uh, so if you have it, you can input it right here. And pretty much that's what we did in this screen. And then we hit write. Um, pretty much we did do a screen capture of this before we changed it over to Cricut in case we wanted to change it back. Chances are pound, pound, seven, eight, six, pound will help revert a lot of the settings and send, um, if you send a Sprint SPC, you could probably get back on Sprint. Um, we loaded the uh, Sprint, or we saved the Sprint uh, SP, uh, PRL uh, just to have a newer Sprint PRL on hand. But uh, pretty much what you're going to want to do to change it over to Cricut, you'll hit load. You'll find your Cricut PRL. We have a thread of those. I don't believe you can send a hybrid uh, PRL over using a CDMA tool. The problem with QPST though is that QPST does not seem to want to, um, well it it can recognize the device but it it doesn't have the, uh, I think the information for the specific chipset so it can't actually interact with that. So you're gonna have to send the PRL from CDMA tool probably or uh, CDMA workshop perhaps. Um, but then again, you probably won't be able to send a hybrid PRL. We sent PRL 42600 because it seems to work in a lot of tri-band areas as well in case you travel a lot and you happen to be going through Chicago, just flying through for a little while and you need phone service. You're going to want a PRL that can connect while you're in a tri-band area. So you'll load your PRL and then you'll write it to the phone. Now, once you write the, uh, the PRL, there's a good chance that your phone might have to be uh, reset. It might kind of lock you out after that and you won't be able to change any other settings. Same can happen when you write anything in this. Go ahead, uh, reset the phone. Uh, you will probably have to close DFS CDMA tool down. That's fine. Just uh, use RevSkill or CDMA Workshop to send the SPC again. Then open up DFS uh, CDMA tool and uh, continue to write everything. All right, now you're going to go to your data. Go ahead and hit read. Um, when we hit read the other time, it pretty much only came up with one line. There's the HDRAN. Uh, but you probably don't need all these settings in here, but go ahead and do it the way we did it. Anywhere there was an NAI or a UID, we did our phone number at mycricket.com. And anywhere it asked for a password, we put cricket. Charlie, Romeo, India, Charlie, Kilo, Echo, Tango, Cricket. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five password fields. We didn't click the check next to it, and we didn't uh, check authentication required password encryption. Um, everything else looked fine the way it was. Uh, EVDO uh, revision A right there. So go ahead and hit write when you're comfortable with those settings. Again, you might be able to go to the next settings. You might not. You might have to reboot it, send the SPC, and then get back in CDMA tool. Um, we'll click read here on mobile IP. We set it to simple IP. You're probably going to have the same problems as with any HTC device. It needs to be on simple. It can't be uh, preferred mobile IP, which is simp plus mob in uh, QPST, or just mobile IP. You'll, you'll get errors and it might not connect to the data network. Um, Active Profile 1, this is all default. This is a, a phone that was activated on Sprint in Houston and then we uh, we purchased it on eBay and brought it here to uh, Austin. Um, go ahead and 
change all this, the NAI is your phone number at mycricket.com again. Uh, right here we uncheck these because you're going to check it if you're going to enter the value in hex format. If you're going to enter it uh, normally, just write uh, cricket right here, like that, and cricket right here. Now on this screen you're going to want to uh, go ahead and hit write current profile settings, but also hit write over here after you make that change to simple IP. So once all of this is done, you should be able to uh, boot the phone back up. Um, go ahead and give uh, Cricket or one of our dealers uh, your ESN so you can put it on your account. Um, pretty much we're going into settings, about, and phone identity. And this is uh, what you're going to convert. Go ahead, uh, get your MEID and go to, um, let's see, what do we use? MEID converter, we just googled it and probably your first match will be uh, MEIDconverter.com which works. Go ahead and enter that MEID there and it should give you the uh, 18 uh, digit uh, MEID uh, starting with a 2. That's what you're going to give to uh, Cricket to put on your account. Right there, see we got our, our cricket text. Just a promotion that they're running. Um, another thing you're going to want to do is set up the MMS, which is really not that hard on this device. Go ahead and go into your dialer, dial pound pound data, D A T A, pound. You'll come to a screen that should say view or edit. Just like this, it's uh, EPST. We're going to go ahead and click edit. We change the SBC to 000000. 000. And then we're going to go into advanced. And go ahead and go down here where it says MMSC setting. Click that. Uh, name production, that's fine. MMSC. Change it to http colon forward slash forward slash mms.mycricket.com forward slash servlets forward slash mms. Go ahead and take the mms proxy out. Go ahead and take the mms port out. The mms protocol is WAP 2.0. Uh, once you're go done with that, go ahead and back out. It'll save everything. Um, we're running this on the $55 Android plan. We don't have the device root yet. We haven't set up a proxy. Uh, we might do a video about that. We might not. Probably won't. Uh, it's pretty much common knowledge, uh, same thing as goes for the uh, the older devices, so there's really no change uh, there. Also in that pound pound data area, you might want to check the streaming. Usually this problem arises with Sprint phones. They try to route all the uh, streaming data through their own servers. So that's under RTSP slash HTTP uh, settings. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, null these out. So pretty much I'm going to change these to 254.254.254.254 and I'm going to change the uh, port to 0. This is something you'll probably want to do even if you have this phone on Sprint. Um, by not routing it through an additional uh, location, you're probably speeding it up. Of course, if you're with Cricket, it just won't work. Uh, you'll pretty much be uh, denied access to route your information through those or that server. So go ahead and change it up and hit back. Um, we'll write on our tutorial if those settings uh, need to be 254 or 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. So like I said, this is just kind of a little guide to help you out. Definitely follow along on the thread in our forum. Uh, people will chime in and let you know what they've tried. Also, if there's software updates that change some things around, you'll probably find that information on the thread. We probably won't make an additional uh, video for this. So good luck. This is the Sprint HTC Evo 4G LTE on Cricut Wireless.
Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash cricket users.